Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue our investment series throughout the Sword and Shield era. And today we're looking at none other than Chilling Rain. So the big question is, should we invest in Chilling Rain? First, let's take a look at it. Quite a nice looking box. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen any of my other videos on Pokemon investing, first of all, go check them out if you get a chance. Second of all, the way the scoring works when it comes to um, a sealed set, today obviously looking at uh, Chilling Rain, we're looking at three criteria. And we're gonna score each out of five. That gives us a total out of 15. The higher the score, the more investable the set. So the first score, the first five, is gonna be um, on the print run. So what, and another word, interchangeable word for that is supply and demand. So what was the supply? What was the demand like? Or how big was the print run? That's our first score. Second one is the hits. Um, are there any major chase cards? Are there any sort of, or how many ancillary sort of chase cards are there? You know, cards above that $10 mark. And the third criteria is the fun factor. So how fun is the set to open? How fun is it to keep sealed and keep in a collection? Is it nice to look at? Is the box nice? Is it going to be fun for streamers to rip open in the future? Is it going to be fun for kids to revisit in the future? Ultimately, that gives us a score out of 15. The higher the score, the more investable. So let's jump right in. Criteria one, print run. Look, it's no secret that during the Sword and Shield era, sets were printed pretty damn heavily. I think Chilling Rain came out with about two big print runs for the booster boxes. And when we're talking supply, demand, or print run, we've got to look at the PSA pop report. Currently 30,000 graded cards, which you compare it to early uh, Sword and Shield sets like Darkness Ablaze, Vivid Voltage, it just doesn't compare. The other thing that I think affected the supply and demand, particularly the demand on Chilling Rain, was it was the precursor to the big set. Evolving Skies was around the corner. And what happened particularly here when the second main print wave came out is that Evolving Skies was about to be released or just released and everyone's attention was turning to the big set Evolving Skies. As a result, it's probably left stock on the shelf, so to speak, for lack of a better word, for a little longer than what you'd like. But I don't think that's completely Chilling Rain's fault. As a result, I'm going to give this a score of 3 out of 5 for supply demand. It wasn't printed anywhere near as much as the previous two sets before it, like main sets Darkness Ablaze and Vivid Voltage. Demand was there for this set. It's just obviously a tension turn of Evolving Skies. Criteria two, the hits. I just want to pop something up quickly here, but Chilling Rain really gives me black and white Plasma Freeze vibes. I don't know if we can base, uh, I don't know if we can base its price future off that set. We probably can't, but it just gives me those vibes. Similar sort of set. But anyway, scrolling through price high to, lo high to low so we can look at the hits. The main chase card, which is a really, really nice looking card, is that Blaziken VMAX alternate artwork, currently sitting at about $230. Uh, in the last year, like most alt arts from the Sword and Shield era, particularly Chilling Rain, they have gone up quite considerably in price. Scrolling down, we've got the Galarian Birds. That Moltres is a really nice looking card. The booster box pricing, let's have a look. Over the last 12 months, I think we'll notice a fairly high trend up, probably from somewhere like $95, yeah, maybe $95, $100 up to $145. So about a 50% increase in sealed booster box price over the last 12 months. The most graded card from the set is that gold Snorlax. Oh, something's not going right there. But anyway, yeah, the most graded card from the set is that gold Snorlax. There's about, I think there's close to two and a half, three thousand 3,000 PSA 10 copies. Uh, scrolling through, again, those bird, that Zapdos is my favourite. I know it's not quite as expensive or doesn't have the value that the Moltres does, but that's my favourite. Really love that Zorora V alternate art on the snow there. That's just a nice looking card. I don't think the Articuno is as nice as the other two birds. But I just wanted to show you this one. That Rapidash is cool too. It's giving off the, <laughs> those sort of My Little Pony vibes almost, that, uh, that Rapidash. But scroll back out. Let's look at this Slow King. This is one alt art that I think is a bit of a sleeper just because of how nice the artwork is. I know it's not a fan favorite Pokemon, but look at that artwork. That is a good looking card. And if we look at its price history over the last year, 
We'll see it's moving in the right, had a bit of a jump around October and then stayed pretty steady, but really moved in the north direction, like a lot of other Chilling Rain uh, alternate art cards. We'll just jump on to the next page here just to show you how many hits. I know there's the Blazik in VMAX, that's the main chase card, but how many hits are above $10, $20? There's even a fair few above $30 or hovering around that $25 price. Um, the Fold Crystal Gold card, Really nice Caitlin uh, trainer there, above $25. Water energy above the money. Ice Rider Calyrax V, Peonia Full Art. There's now some rainbows like that Blaziken Full Max. Clara, Electrode Gold, still above $10. Celebi V Max in the rainbow, still above $10. I think we'll find there's probably only one more $10 card. Um, on the third page here, but to think we have to go to the third page on TCG Player just to get a card, there you go. Uh, Echoing Horn, the final card of up $10. As a result, I'm gonna have to score this 4.5 out of five for artwork. I know it's hard to pull old arts, but the artwork on the old arts are probably some of my favorites in the Sword and Shield era. I, I really think they're underrated, and I also think they're quite undervalued. 4.5 out of 5 for me for the artwork. Criteria 3, fun factor. I want to jump through this one pretty quick so we can get to the end and get a score out because I spent so long on those hits because I just think the hits are really nice in this set. So the fun factor. I think the booster box displays really, really well. Like I was saying, it gives me sort of plasma freeze vibes from the black and white era. The elite trainer boxes are so-so mm, for me. The fun factor when it comes to ripping it the chase for those alt arts will be amazing. And the amount of other cards, trainers, gold cards sitting above $10, I think will make this a good set to rip open and fun for the future. For that reason, I'm giving it 3.5 out of five. So in terms of a total score, we're sitting on a total of 11 out of 15. If you check out my other videos, this is the highest scoring sword and shield set yet. So the big question, can we make money by investing in the sealed product? And my answer couldn't be any clearer. Yes, yes, and yes. So I've just jumped onto eBay. We're looking at the booster boxes here. I've searched low to high. Uh, there's one going, 24 bids, $201. Uh, cheapest one, 235 past postage. So you touch over 240, another one over 240, 245, 248, 250, 250. Another one about 250 posted, 255, 259. So what will happen is once those lowest price boxes move off the market, there's gonna be a new floor there. And I think the floor of 250 will come really quick. So my advice, get in on this set, invest now. Keep in mind those prices that I was passing on uh, is Australian dollars. I can see this set for a booster box in 12 months time, the new floor being 300 Australian dollars. I think 230 at the moment is a good price for this set considering the value of the cards that you can get inside, the relatively low pop for the sets around it from PSA. I think this is gonna be a great set for the future. So my advice, jump on board, get some boxes and watch it slowly go up in price. If you've got any comments, please leave them down below. If you've got any commentary, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are around Chilling Rain. I really like it. Do you? Do you think it's a good investment? Let me know.